Remarketing List for Search Ads, or RLSA, is a feature within Google Ads for customizing your search network campaigns. It makes sense, search is in the name. We can use audiences and apply them to those specific search campaigns to be able to show customized ad text or even adjust our bids and targeting based on these audiences. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what remarketing audience options you have for using RLSA campaigns. Then we'll go through the few different setting options you have for RLSA, and then I'm gonna talk about a few strategies on how I have used RLSA to either improve my campaigns or expand my reach. Before we jump into Google Ads, I wanted to talk about a few things to keep in mind before starting an RLSA campaign. The first is that your remarketing audiences for your search ads will work for search partners if you have that setting enabled within your campaign. If you're not familiar with search partners, they are non-google.com websites that still can show Google search ads. Probably the most familiar one that you're used to is YouTube. Yes, it's owned by Google, but it's not google.com. Ask.com is another example of a search partner. Search partners can only be an addition to your network targeting for a search campaign. You cannot target just the search partners, but you do have control whether you want your ads to be shown on search partner sites or not. So any audiences that you're adding to your campaigns with search partners, they will apply. Next is that you can implement RLSA for any kind of bid strategy that you have within your account. Because you can use audiences to make bid adjustments within the platform, some people think that RLSA is only available for manual bidding campaigns. But that's not true. If you are running an automated bid strategy campaign, you may not be able to bid separately on your RLSA audiences, but those audiences will still be taken into consideration when Google is performing all its automated decisions. And we're definitely going to get into bidding for these audiences later on. And the last thing to keep in mind for RLSA campaigns is that you need a minimum number of 1,000 cookies before that audience is eligible to be used within the campaign. You can still add the audience to a campaign, but Google will tell you within a red letter warning that the audience may be too small to be used. Feel free to leave that audience in there, but then you're gonna have to work to build more cookies within that audience so you can either start seeing the data that you want or targeting that specific audience for your search campaigns. But now let's hop into Google Ads and we'll go over what remarketing list options you have for your search ads. Since we're talking about adding audiences to our search campaigns, it makes sense for me to jump right into Audience Manager. To find Audience Manager, in your top navigation, click on Tools, and then it'll be the first option for you under the Shared Library column. But since I'm already there, I can close that out. Now, unfortunately, I have to blur out the names of these audiences, so focus on the second column, that is the Type column, because we do see a few different options and we'll talk about each one briefly. But if we go over two more, we will see Size for Search. When you have already gone and create audiences and you're on this page, you can look at this column to see if it'll be eligible to use for RLSA campaigns. Remember, I just told you in the intro, we need at least 1,000 cookies for that audience to be eligible to be used for RLSA campaigns. And in this particular account, I only see three options. The rest are too small to serve. So I can still add them to my campaigns, but they are not going to do anything. But to look at your remarketing options, click on the blue plus button, and you'll see we can create remarketing lists. The first option will be website visitors. Google does create a website visitors default option, but if you wanna create one of your own, you can change how long that user is kept within that audience. You can choose specific website pages so you don't have to do all visitors to your website. You can create audiences off of people who visited those pages during a specific date range and a few other combinations within website visitors. Your next option will be app users. Hopefully you have Google Analytics on your app and then you can create a variety of audiences based on app interaction. The easiest one would be people just visiting the app. If you have certain events set up in the app that the user has performed while they're using it, you can create audiences off of those actions. You can even create an audience off of people who haven't used the app in a certain amount of time to get those users to come back and re-engage. If you have your YouTube account linked with your Google Ads account, you can create YouTube user audiences. I created another video that dives into all the options you get with YouTube users, so you can check that one out right here. But to summarize, you can create audiences off of people who interacted with your channel, who watched any of your videos, who watched any sort of videos as ads, who subscribed to your channel, who liked your video, who shared your video, and a few other different combinations of how they can interact with your YouTube channel. Next is gonna be customer lists. You may be more familiar with calling this customer match. So look at your email list that you can upload within Google Ads if you are eligible to use customer match within the account. And then that bottom option you see is custom combination. That is literally making a combination, yes, I'm using the name within the definition, of the four options we just talked about. Website visitors, app users, YouTube users, and your customer lists. 
So if you know you can hone in on a specific audience and you have enough volume to create a variety of different combinations, feel free to test that one out. Just understand the more specific your audience gets, the less volume it'll get. And since the minimum number we need is already 1,000, it could be difficult for a lot of accounts. But if you are interested in learning more about custom combinations, I do have a video going over that one that will give you some few examples to consider for your remarketing campaigns. Now, one option that wasn't in that list is a similar audience. Think of this as like Google's version of a lookalike audience. We see that the bottom three options on this screen are similar audiences. These were automatically created after I made one of the four audience options that we just talked about. Now, if we look at the size search column, we see that some similar audiences, like ones based off of website visitors, are eligible to use for RLSA campaigns. There are certain similar audiences, like ones based off of the AdWords optimized list. I know certain similar audiences based off of YouTube audiences are also incompatible with RLSA campaigns. But for whatever reason, if you wanna add similar audiences, you can do them in certain cases. Now, everything I went over so far with Audience Manager are just audiences that you can create directly within Google Ads. But one thing that you can do is create audiences within Google Analytics and import those audiences into Google Ads. And I know I'm tossing out a lot of videos at you, but here is another one that we created on how you can make audiences within the new GA4 and import those into Google Ads. And yes, the audiences that you create within Universal Analytics can also be imported into Google Ads. And after you do that, they will show up within the Audience Manager. And the reason we like creating these audiences within Google Analytics is that it offers different options that you can't make within Google Ads. Some examples are we can create audiences off of events. If you're using Google Tag Manager or you have tools that automatically create events within Google Analytics, you can make audiences off of those actions and import them into Google Ads. If you watch that video of how I import audiences from Google Analytics into Google Ads, you'll get a full understanding of what we can actually create within Google Analytics. After you have all of your audiences created that you want to use within your campaigns, there are a few ways that we can add the audiences. And to do that, I'm going to hop into a different account just so I can actually go through the physical steps. This is the Paid Media Pros demo account, so we have a lot of YouTube video audiences because that's mainly what we use this for. So let's say I want to add this audience off of anyone who viewed any video to one of my search campaigns. You can see once I clicked on it, a blue bar at the top appeared. I want to go towards the Add To option. Because if we click on that, we can see we can add the audience to any campaign or ad group. And for here, there's no right or wrong way. It really depends on how your search campaigns are structured. So if I want to add it to a campaign, we see a few options there. And if I click on it, it's going to add it to that campaign. But I'm going to cancel out of it, go back to Add To, and this time I'm just going to show you ad groups. I'll click on the same campaign. And this one only has one option, but I could choose it from the ad group. If you do have more options there, you can just hand select where you want this audience to be applied. And if I select Next, we get to the portion of how we want this audience to be used. There are really two main ways of how we can use audiences for RLSA campaigns. Now you see three options right here, but the smart default option is Google saying, hey, we already know what you have for your audience settings at the ad group level. Do you want us to just apply what you already have in place? So yes, you can do that. But the two I want you to really focus on are targeting and observation. If I choose targeting, I'm telling Google only show my search ads to users who fall within this audience. Now, obviously, they have to type in search queries that will trigger your target keywords, of course. But purely from the audience perspective, you are only going after users within that audience. If I switch it over to observation, I'm then telling Google target anyone who's searching for the queries that will match with my keywords, and then I'll be able to just observe how that audience performs. If I have any manual bid strategies in place, I will be able to make bid adjustments on that user, but I'm not solely targeting them. So in this case, I'm just going to leave it as observation and then click add audiences. And now let me go into that specific campaign and ad group just so we can see how that audience is put in place. If you look at the very top, you can see I am in this specific ad group. We just have it labeled ad group one. And then if you look at the left-hand navigation, I am in the audience section within Google Ads. So as I launch this campaign, I'll be able to see how people within this viewed any video audience performs because there's my targeting setting. Remember, I have it as observation. I'm not targeting these people specifically. I just want to keep an eye on how this audience performs. Because I have observation, I can go up to the bid adjustment column and then I can choose to increase or decrease that bid adjustment depending on how this audience performs. Now, when we're in Audience Manager, 
I mentioned that there were two ways to add audiences to your campaigns or ad groups. We went over one is just selecting that audience within Audience Manager, but the second way to do it is within that campaign or ad group itself. So when you're in the audience section of a particular campaign or ad group, you can click on the blue pencil button. You can see we can add it to the campaign and ad group. Here's where we can choose targeting or observation, but then we also get more options. Let me cancel out of this bid adjustment thing. And we're seeing different options because certain audiences that we can use within Google Ads cannot be created with an audience manager. They are just default options built within the channel. So now we see detailed demographics, kind of getting a better understanding of that persona of that person. I'm only gonna show you the main categories. You can dive in yourself and see if any of these are applicable to your business. You can add those to potentially to observe or target. There are affinity audiences, the very common in-market audience. Well, I'll check that one. And a lot of these can drill down into very deep specific categories. I'm gonna go back, but we'll come to this one soon. There we have all the remarketing and similar audiences. These are the ones you will be able to see with an audience manager and then combined audiences. Now this is different than custom combinations. Custom combinations were only available for the four options within audience manager. Combined audiences are taking everything within this view and making your own custom combination. So it's kind of confusing. They have very similar names, but they're two different audience combinations. Since this fake campaign is called CRM, I'm just going to type CRM in here and we see there are other options that I could choose from. It makes sense for me to want to target CRM solutions within my CRM keyword targeted campaign. But then we see some related in-market audiences that I may want to observe when running my search ads. If I go down and save, so you can now see that yes, we can add multiple audiences per campaign. And then I can make bid adjustments for each of these audiences. Now I'm gonna go back up, click on the audiences button, and I'm gonna change my setting to targeting. I'm gonna have the same audiences in here and save that again. When I do that, I'm telling Google to target anyone within these audiences. These are not combined into one. So if a user is typing in a search query, it matches one of my keywords within this ad group, and they're only in the enterprise software audience, they will still see my ad. Think of these as or conditions. I'm not combining them into one. If I wanted to do that, I will go back up into the audiences area and create a combined audience. A user can be in any one of the options that we have added to this particular ad group. If you want to learn more about the benefits of targeting versus observation, Michelle made a video that you can watch right here. It'll get a little bit more specific than the time I have to do that today. So we see right here from a targeting standpoint that we're focused on a very specific user. And when we're focused on a user, we can give them the good experience of having more specific ad copy and potentially a better landing page experience as well. So let's hop into the ad creation portion. Now, the first audience I added to this ad group was people who viewed any video within the past 540 days. So if I'm targeting that specific audience, we clearly know that that user has had some sort of interaction with my brand in the past. And watching a video is a pretty specific action. So since I know the action the user has taken at some point in the past, I can create ad copy that better speaks to that user and their intent. I know this is a responsive search ad and these headlines could switch around depending on how many options I have and if I don't pin them, but just look at the preview example. Let's say this is a regular extended text ad for now as well. So I'm telling users within this ad, you've seen the video. And I know that because I have a YouTube user audience of anyone who watched one of my videos. And now I can be a little bit more confident saying, you've seen the video, now try us free for 30 days. Assuming this is a CRM software because that's what the ad group was named. And that's just one example for that specific audience. Now, depending on how many audiences you're adding to the campaign, then you'll probably tweak the message that it could satisfy anyone within any of the audiences that you have added to the campaign or ad group. And that's, again, all depending on how you've structured your campaign and your audiences. Now, if you're using the observation settings, there's no way of knowing which audience a user may fall in. So that's when I've used certain features like the if functions within expanded text ads to say if the user is within this audience, show them this headline. And then by default, they can see certain ones. And we have a video about if functions that you can look at right here that'll better explain it. That is the best way I have differentiated ad copy with observation audiences. But one potential fallback is that you might have to create a lot of different variations within the same ad group. And there we can see it be more work and not as efficient. Now, the other main way I like to use RLSA campaigns is to try to expand the reach or even find new keywords to target. And as I leave this screen, I'm gonna hop into dynamic search ads. Dynamic search ads aren't keyword targeted campaigns. Google's gonna look at the content on your website or landing pages 
create most of the ads themselves, and match that to user search queries on Google.com. Again, so it's based on the content in your site and how it relates to user search queries. Now, what we do with dynamic search ads is that we negate all of our current target keywords from all of our DSA campaigns. That way we're using dynamic search ads just to try to find new keyword options. So a lot of times we will create what we call our DSA, remarketing dynamic search ads, where we will add targeting only we will look at some of the better performing audiences that we have used in other campaigns, target just that audience specifically within a remarketing DSA campaign, and try to see if we can find new keywords that could perform better within these audiences. So if I know that the business services audience consistently performs well when I'm observing all my other campaigns or ad groups that I have within the account, my thought could be, I want to find new keywords, but I don't want to test it out on my entire website or anyone who could be possibly searching for anything related to the content of my website. I want to find good keywords that work best with my bread and butter audiences. This is kind of a good way to start testing DSA ads without really opening the floodgates and going after any person possible related to any page or content on your website, going after a very specific audience. Now, another way that we've loved to use remarketing lists for search ads, and you might be surprised to hear me say this, is on pure broad match campaigns. One scenario is that we've taken our list of people who have already visited the website before. They're familiar with our brand, they know what we have to offer. But for whatever reason, if the account just has low volume overall, and I need to find a way to try to scale my search campaigns, I'll open up my match type to peer broad, but do a targeting only setting just on people who have been to my website before. Even if the search query quality is a little bit less than I want it to be, I at least know the user might have a better intent or the quality of that user could be greater depending on what audience I'm using for that targeting only setting. This is another way to test potentially a new match type and expand your keyword reach without going after everyone under the sun who could be searching for a pure broad match related search query and we know how irrelevant those could be. I had one account that was running a remarketing list for search ads campaign doing pure broad match targeting and it was pulling some of the best ROAS that we've seen just because we were using it from a remarketing standpoint. It's probably not gonna work every time, but it's something that you may wanna consider testing because we have seen a lot of wins using this strategy. There are a lot of examples that we can give on how you can use audiences, but it's really gonna be depending on who you wanna reach and the goals of your account. You have the ability to just target certain users or just collect more information on how groups of users perform or interact with your ads. Use that information to either create new campaigns or new ad groups, come up with ad copy and potential landing pages that's gonna better speak to those users. And then as you can see of how we wrapped up this video, you can use RLSA campaigns to try to expand their reach and grow your account and find new ways that you can help your account potentially get more conversions or just scale to reach new users. If you wanna share cool ways that you've used audiences for search ads, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you wanna see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.